Hello, and welcome back to the X-Wing Duo. Today we will be talking about the B, T, L, B, Y wing. That's right. Welcome to the X-Wing Duo. I'm John. I'm Alex. And today we talk about the BTLB Y-Wing, or the Republic Y-Wing. Uh, also the Clone Wars Y-Wing. People call it a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> I but, do not fly this list. I, do, I don't fly anything related to this, so I would not know that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm a big Republic fan. Um, so, first of all, it is a small base ship. And... I love it. What do you think? It it's pretty good. I can feel just by holding it. It's it's, it's chunky. It's chunky. It's really chunky. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I think it looks great. I like the turret on the top. I like how chunky it is. It looks like it just came out of the movies. I love it. It is a really nice base. Just I am a child and I know how easy it is to put. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the dial. The dial, I have not seen this yet, so... Yeah, she's new. She has not seen this. I've actually flown it a couple times. I didn't even know he's, he's flown it <laughs> until he got home. Yeah. So. Okay, so starting with the ones. We have one banks and one straight. The one straight is blue. That's pretty good. It, it's pretty normal. The twos, we have two turns, two banks, and two straight. The two straight is blue. Everything else is white. That's pretty good. We have the threes. We have three turns, three banks, three straight. The three turns are red. Everything else is white. And we have a four straight, which is red, and a four K, which is red. That's it's bad. It's not a good dial. It is a slow ship. But it's, a four straight on most of the ships, most of the time is white. But the 4K, if it's not red, it's the best ship in the game. I don't know a single ship that doesn't have a red one of those. 4K? Yeah. The Defender. The TIE Defender has a light 4K. And to be fair, she's right. It is the only ship in the game that has it, which is why it's so expensive. So, but yeah, it's not a great dial. I think it does what it needs to do, but seeing more red on the dial than blue, it's hard. But I don't think this ship, I, I don't think it's bad for the ship. I think the ship does exactly what it's supposed to do with it. Let's talk about the pilots. The pilots. So the base ship, the lowest generic, and in X-Wing terms, non-limited, is the Red Squadron Bomber. It's an Initiative 2. It has a two dice forward arc. It has a one defense agility, five hull three shields. It has a focus, a target lock, a red barrel roll, and a red reload action. It has a turret, astromech, a modification, a torpedo, a device, which has actually been renamed payload uh, as of this last uh, rules reference, and it has a gunner slot. It has a built-in ability. Okay. Yeah. It's called Plated Hull. While you defend, if you are not critically damaged, change one critical result to a hit result. How what that means is if you get into my hull, okay, you roll your attack dice, I have a chance to modify your dice as the defender before you do. If you rolled a natural critical, and I do not have any face-up damage cards on this Y-Wing, I can change one of those criticals to a hit. When I first read that, 
I wasn't terribly excited about it. It's, it's pretty good for the level it is. It is super good. After I've played it, it is way better than I thought. Now, if you get critical damage on you, it no longer counts. I mean, un unless you have a repairable crit. But, man, it it has literally saved lives in the game. I ha They stay around much longer than you would think. Uh, I, I love it. I love that built-in ability. Uh, the next pilot is the Shadow Squadron. What do we got? The Shadow Squadron is the exact same as the Bommel, but it adds one initiative and a talent spot. Right, it's three initiative now. And this Y-Wing, because it has a red barrel roll, I think that talent slot is very important because expert handling is a thing. And that gives a ship with a red barrel roll, it gives the ship a white barrel roll. And I think that really improves on the platform. And I think that's important. Okay, the next pilot we're going to talk about is Goji. Uh, Goji is a clone. So his initiative goes down to a 2. He does lose the talent slot. But because he's a limited pilot, he has an ability. While a friendly ship at range 0 to 3 defends, it may roll one additional defense die for each friendly bomb or mine at range 0 to 1 of it. What do you think of that? I I do not know if that's a good or bad thing. I think it's decent. I agree. I I haven't flown this particular pilot yet, but that's because I'm not sure how to use him. Um, the fact that, I mean, the, the fact that he gives friendlies additional defense die, that's a big deal. But the way to do that, the trigger, having to be within zero to one of a bomb or a mine. For starters, you never want to be, that's friendly bomb or mine too. So you have to basically bomb your own guys to take advantage of that. Now there is an upgrade that allows you to exploit this a little bit but I still I still can't find a way to put him in my list you will almost have to build the list around him and being an initiative two with no talent I don't see how now I could I don't know for sure I could be missing something or at the very least there's a play style that I'm not familiar with. I don't see how I can use him. Who who's next? <laughs> or two D two. The next one is O two D two. It gets rid of the astromech and gain and gains a crew slot and a talent. Yeah. Its initiative is, is two and its pilot ability is at the start of the engagement phase phase <laughs> if there was an enemy ship at at your back arc gain one calculate token this pilot is awesome i have flown r2d2 i loved it for starters just to explain r2d2 is flying from the astromech slot in the physical ship leaving the the cockpit for the the crew i love that they thought of that i think that is super cool uh again he gains the talent slot as well it's always good uh and his ability is really good it does it, and it says a calculate token it's not the action so that happens even if you're stressed which is really cool I love the R2-D2 pilot. He was a lot of fun to fly. There are ways to make him even better. And we'll get to that shortly. But he was awesome. He was super cool to fly. 
The next pilot we have is Broadside. Broadside is Initiative 3. He, uh, uh, he gets the Astromech slot, and he also has a talent. He also has an ability. His ability is, while you perform a turret attack, if your turret indicator is in one of your side arcs, you may change one blank result to a focus result. What do you think? That's a hard question. I can't choose between good or decent. It's I... pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I've flown him, but every time I had a shot in my side arc, for some reason, I always rolled really good. I never had a chance to take advantage of his excuse me, ability. You normally always roll bad. I know. Like the card didn't want you to play it. I know. <laughs> That's how I felt. I never got a chance to activate his ability, which, in the long run, is good. But I would that also means even after flying him, I don't have a great opinion about his uh, or I don't have an opinion about his ability. It, it, it I think it would be really good. I think it's really good. I think it's really good. This is actually the one pilot that I was super excited about when I first heard about the Y-Wing pilot. I was super excited about him. After flying him, he is good. That's it. I'm pretty indifferent about it. Who's next? Next up is Matchstick. It's Initiative 4. And it's, and it's pilot ability is while you perform a primary attack or turret attack, you may reroll one attack die for each red token you have. That and What's your opinion? I think that's a great thing. I also know that you don't want any red tokens, so why would you? Let me blow need your that? mind. Let me blow your mind. When you target lock somebody, the token that they receive is considered a red token. So, when I flew Matchstick, I had R3 on two of my ships. And R3, now R3 allows you to, that ship, to acquire up to two target locks. So, with one Jedi, and I believe I had another Y-Wing, um, they each target locked him right off the bat. You can target lock your own ships, you just can't attack them unless you have some way to do that. But I target locked him with both my other ships, which meant every time he attacked, he could reroll two attack dice. On top of that, if for some reason I got stressed, now I can reroll three. Yes, but when do you? <laughs> I'm thinking when, when. How often do you actually get stressed? And do you really want to get stressed? No, you don't. But it's really cool that if you do, you're just making your ship, your attacks, a little bit better. I think that's awesome. Next we have Oddball. Oddball, uh, he has all the same slots, talent, turret, device, uh, modification, etc., etc. Uh, initiative 5, his pilot ability. After you execute a red maneuver or perform a red action, if there is an enemy ship in your bullseye arc, you may acquire a lock on that ship. Pretty good. I think it's pretty good, especially with the red barrel roll. If I can keep that red barrel roll, I can reposition and potentially get a target lock and because the, the Y-Wings have torpedo slots now I could potentially put a proton torpedo 
uh, plasma tor torpedoes, and boom, you get a shot off. I think that's pretty cool. I think it's a good ability. Who's next? Next up is Anakin Skywalker. He's initiative six and he has three force, with which one regains every round. Correct. He loses the talent slot and he gets a force power slot instead, which makes sense. His pilot ability is after you fully execute a maneuver, if there is an enemy ship in your front arc at range 0 to 1 or in your bullseye, you may spend one force to remove one stress token. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. I agree. <laughs> uh, this is the same ability he has on the Delta 7. And I've heard other people talk about how they don't quite like it on the Y-Wing. And um, I disagree. And I'll tell you why. The Y-Wing has more ways to get stressed and less ways to relieve that stress. With Anakin's ability, you're giving the ship one more avenue to relieve your stress. And I think that's a very big deal, especially at Initiative 6. I think that's amazing. I think he's expensive, but I think that's amazing. <laughs> We're going to talk about the upgrade cards that came with the pack. Um, I have put them in alphabetical order. They're not in similar slot order. So bear with us. <laughs> Who's first? First up is a Gunnel, Ahsoka Tano, with a Leah Kong Force token, ability that she gives you is after you execute a maneuver you may spend one force to choose a friendly ship at range zero to three in your firing arc. If you do, you may spend you may perform a lead focus action, even while stressed. Sounds amazing. It's very amazing. And she costs the part. So what do you think? <laughs> I think she's Amazing. I think so too. If you put her on Anakin, you now have four force tokens on a ship. That's big. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have a crew C3PO. This is Republic only. So is Ahsoka, by the way. We forgot to mention that. While you defend, if you are calculating, you may reroll one defense die. After you perform a calculate action, gain one calculate token, and he gives a white calculate action. This guy is pretty cool. Uh, currently, the Republic only has the ARC-170 and the BTLB Y-Wing to put a crew on, and specifically on the Y-Wing, only the R2-D2 pilot can take a crew. Now this is super cool because R2-D2, when he has a ship behind him, in his rear arc, he gets a free calculate token, whether he's stressed or not. And C-3PO says, if you're calculating, you can reroll one defense die. And <laughs> uh, C-3PO also gives you an additional calculate token after you do the calculate action. So with that being said, R2-D2 could potentially have three Calculate Tokens in a single round. Now that's a big deal. That is pretty cool. Obviously he works well with R2-D2 and that's where he's supposed to be. I think that's where he's supposed to be. Um, now I could see reasons to put him on our ARC-170. Man, he's, he's clearly supposed to be with R2-D2 on the Y-Wing. Who's next? C-1-10-P. Hmm? 
This is Chopper, by the way. If you've seen the Rebels TV show, this is Chopper. There was an episode of Rebels where there was a crashed Y-Wing, and that's where Hera found Chopper. The end? I would say it totally looks like Chopper now that you mention it. I think... I think that's Chopper in there. I think the Y-Wing... That's awesome. ...has Chopper as the droid. I did not realize that. That is pretty cool. <laughs> what does Chopper do? <laughs> Republic only, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Set up this... Equip this side face up because it is two-sided. Okay. So this side that you're reading now must Just be face up face when up you post that you up. Set up. The ability Choppo gives you for the side you post face face up when you set up is after you execute a maneuver, you may spend one energy to perform a lead Evade. Evade. I couldn't think of a name. <laughs> I'm like, I know what this means. Yep. Evade action, even while stressed. During the end phase, if this card has zero active charges, charges, flip it. It's important to note that it has two charges unrecurring. Okay, this is the ran out of charges side. Yes. The after you execute a maneuver, you must choose a ship at range 0 to 1 to gain a GM token. That includes yourself if there's nobody else. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why I'm questioning. That's I what still I'm think it's good. I think that's amazing. I think it's really I cool. I just think it, I feel like it should not be allowed to go to friendly ships. Well, I think that it, it literally is called C110P Erratic. When you flip it over, he becomes erratic. He's tripping out. So, he potentially could <laughs> damage. It's not damage, but he could potentially do something negative to the ship he's on. Okay. All right. Up next, we have Delayed Fuses. This is that upgrade I was talking about. This is uh, potentially what you really want to use a lot when you're flying Goji. Delayed Fuses is a modification. After you drop, launch, or place a bomb or mine, you may place one Fuse Marker on that device. Now, a Fuse Marker means the first time that device would trigger, you spend the you spend the fuse token instead, so it stays out. The idea is mines. You can fly over mines with a fuse. Once they're flown over for the first time, you, they lose the fuse, which means the next ship to fly over it, it detonates. Uh, with bombs, bombs explode at the end of the activation phase. Uh, if there's a fuse token, you wait till the next activation phase. Uh, these are super cool, and they're cheap. But, at least with bombs, with mines, I could definitely see me using this with mines. With bombs, you don't have any idea where they're going to be two rounds from now, unless you have a way to make sure they're there. Or you corral them in some way. I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. And with Goji, even though there's a fuse token, your ships are still within range 0 to 1 of that mine or bomb, which means they're rolling one additional defense die. That is awesome. But again, to spend the point, to build a list around an initiative 2, I might just for fun, but I don't see it being torment. So, yeah. All right, what do you have? Next up, we have a turret add-on that's called an Ion Cannon Turret. It gives you a weight turret mover, and the attack is, if this attack hits, spend one of the damage or critical results to cause the defender to suffer one damage. 
all remaining damage or critical results inflect ion tokens instead of damage. Yep. So, the idea with this, it's important to note that it adds a... The attack. Range, a range 1 to 2, 3 dice, single arc turret. Okay? Yes, um, what this, this is does a... is, best case scenario, you're going to do a single damage. All remaining hit and crits are turned into ion tokens. Now, that's pretty cool. Uh, ion tokens, if a ship is ionized, it is required to do a uh, one blue straight. It is not assigned a dial. And a small base ship requires one ion token. A medium sized ship requires two ions. And a large base ship requires three ions to be considered ionized. Uh, the ion tokens stay there. Um, until the ion, the ionized maneuver is performed, or you have some way of getting rid of ion tokens. Next up, we have Foresight. This is a force power. It's a special attack. This is pretty neat. It is a bullseye only, two dice attack. After an enemy ship executes a maneuver, you may spend one force to perform this attack against it as a bonus attack. This happens during the activation phase. If a ship would land in your bullseye, you can spend a force and boom, attack them with two dice. Uh, also, you may change one focus result to a hit. Your dice cannot be modified otherwise, so you can't spend target locks, you can't spend force, uh, you can't spend uh, focus or anything else. You cannot modify the, the attack dice. The defense dice could potentially still be modified. Um, this is amazing. I love this. I haven't found a way to use it yet, but I can't wait to actually use it. It seems super cool. Is this only for these um, levels? No, this is a this is a generic. You can use this on anything. Um, it must be a force user, but there is no there's no limitations on it. That's amazing. I love it. Oh, wait, the falcon won't. Is... The falcon has a bullseye. Yeah, but we can't add force things to. Falcon. Ray, you can. Ray, you can. Ray, what do you think of Foresight? I think it's amazing. Well, I want too. to use it on my own, but I can't prove that I can right now. <laughs> you can, I promise. <laughs> All right, what do you have? I have Proton Bomb. Mmm, I love these. Two non recalling charges. Bomb. During the system's phase, you may send one charge to drop a proton bomb using the one forward template. Yep. Uh, the effect is all ships within range 0 to 1 receives a critical. I love it. It's simple. It does what it needs to do. I like it a lot. Yeah. Next, uh... Next upgrade we have is Precognitive Reflexes. It's a force power and it's a small ship only. After you reveal your dial, you may spend one force to perform a barrel roll or boost action. Then, if you performed an action you do not have on your action bar, gain one strain token. If you do, you cannot perform another action during your activation. This is amazing. I love this. Uh, up until now, we've been using uh, supernatural reflexes, which I love. But on Initiative 5 and 6 ships, the, it is super expensive. It is, I could get another ship on the board expensive. This is so usable. Even on Initiative 6, it's worth it. It's a watered-down version of 
supernatural reflexes. Let's put this on Vader. Now, obviously, the the fine print at the bottom kind of goes against Vader's ability, but Vader only has the barrel roll action on his action bar. If he chooses to do a boost, he takes a strain token, which is no big deal because if if he does a blue maneuver after the boost, the strain token goes away. This is an amazing card. I love it. For the points, it's great. I will find so many ways to use this. All right, next up we have the Electro Proton Bomb. It is limited, so you can only get one in a list. It takes the bomb slot and the modification slot, and it requires the reload action. Yes. It has one non-recurring charge. It says, during the system phase, you may spend one charge to drop the Electro Proton Bomb with the one template. Then place one fuse marker on that device. This card's charge cannot be recovered. Now, the effect is really interesting. At the end of the activation phase, this device uh, detonates, obviously, after the second activation phase because you're required to put a fuse marker on it. When this device detonates, each ship at range 0 to 2 rolls 4 attack dice. Each ship loses one shield for each blank result, gains one ion token for each focus or hit result, and gains one disarm token for each critical result. A lot of things happen. It's a very large area. But man, you have to get so many things right to make it work. I think it's a cool idea. I don't think I'll ever use it. What do you think? It depends on what ship I would use it on. That's fair. Man, but it requires the reload action, and it takes up your modification slot, and bomb slot, obviously. I just don't think it's worth it. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Like... I would most definitely use that card as like something I had just the right amount of points to get that card and still have a decent bet. Okay. And I would be like, mm, I don't want to. That's the only two things left on one of my ships. <laughs> I guess I'll put that on there so I can just get it out of the way. That's what I would do it for. And then most likely because it's me, I would use it. Yeah. Okay. It, it would be fun to play, but I don't think I'll find a reason to use it. Yeah. The next upgrade we have is called Snapshot. It is a talent, and it's a special attack. After an enemy ship executes a maneuver, you may perform this attack against it as a bonus attack. Uh, your dice cannot be modified. It is a two dice forward arc attack at range two only. This is awesome. It is awesome. I wish it would at least be two to three. Well, or that's one to two. That's the trick. You don't. I I understand it. They don't want to give the ship an extra attack every round. It'd be too easy. This, if everything, if the stars align, you get to attack, and then during the engagement phase, you get to attack again. I love it. I love it. I think that's awesome. These are the tokens that came with the pack. What do we got? We got two calculate tokens. Which I need to interject here. Two calculate tokens. That's interesting because R2-D2 could potentially have three. So I think it's interesting that they didn't put enough in the pack to use all the abilities. Yeah, actually, that, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we have five charges, mm -hmm. one focus, yep. one disarm, 
four forces, two fuse tokens, three ID tags, mm -hmm. two ions, one jam, two toyka locks, mm -hmm. three shields, and one strain, electro proton bomb, proton bomb, the one toy tunnel, and then this little thing you can use in the plastic ones. And tells you exactly what you should Right, the, the, uh, the dial upgrade pack. Yeah, you can put that into the dial. So, with that, we've talked about everything in the pack. How do you feel about the BTLB Y-Wing? I think it's amazing. I think it's a pretty good ship. I've had a good time with it. I look I forward to using more. I most definitely would never buy it because <laughs> it's not my... It's not resist. It's not resist. <laughs> but no, but I ship. I think it's a great looking ship. I think it's fun to fly. I think it's got a lot and I love the fact that you pointed out it has chopper in it. That is great. Imagine if everyone was different. Like they painted like they That a seems machine. expensive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but a machine um, painted it, and then they had like extra paint from other ships, and it's just like, let's paint a different set. Oh, I can do chrome. Fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us for this episode of the X-Wing Duo on the BT BTLB Y-Wing. Um, I would like to give a special thanks to Uncle Joe for making our logo. See you later.